Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I am thrilled to welcome back my favorite guest, Maya Bagriansova. Maya, Privyet, Kakdala, you are on location at the World Figure Skating Championships. Yes, hi. Uh, Privyet, Dobry Vecher, which is good evening. Um, I'm actually in Montreal at the moment. So yes, very close to Worlds, which is only, it's over. <laughs> yes, are you exhausted? Uh, yeah, I'm dead, literally dead. <laughs> Because I was checking. I lost my. <laughs> you lost Go ahead. Voice? Yeah, I lost my voice yesterday because yeah, I was talking like a lot. You can imagine it, right? So, how many? It, it, because I was reading FS Gossips, and I don't think people realize this, but you actually do all of the translations of your own articles because you are so fantastic and you wanted accurate translations for the rest of the figure skating world. So, you do your articles now in Russian and in English. Uh, some of them, if there are like some interviews that when, that I do with some English speaking people, I try to do the English version as well. So, you know, not much is lost in translation because we, you know how it happens, right? You first translate it to Russian, then it translated back to English and the original sense, original meaning is kind of lost. I try to avoid it. Yeah. So how were the media accommodations at Worlds? So did you have a good seat for everything? Uh, actually, it was pretty well organized. And the good thing is that we had warm food okay. <laughs> actually take Canada did a great job okay. um usually media is you know we have seats we have media center we have press center and we have media seats seats uh at the arena uh but here at the press center we had pretty decent food like breakfast lunch and you know early dinner because you you run into the press center you get some you grab actually some food and then you run back to the seats and then you're running between the mix zone where all the skaters go after they're done with their skate and then you rush back to the arena to see the actual skate so you know uh sometimes my apple watch was telling me are you exercising i was like yeah damn i am so <laughs> Well, you recognize because some i got some text messages that people saw you at the arena you know I was running like everywhere. So yeah. I, I think people might have seen me. Yes, but it's not like they're approaching me. It's like, oh, can I take an autograph? No, no, no. It's me taking autographs of some figure skaters still. Yeah. Now, did you meet Deanna Stilato? That is the most important question that we have. Um, you wanted this to happen. Yes. And okay. she is the queen indeed. Yes. I mean, she's fantastic. Everybody would fall in love with her if they meet her, if they meet her in person. Uh, she is a great public speaker. She knows how to, you know, you know, slip a joke here and there. And she's very self-ironic. And you know what? She, she, you know, everybody keeps asking her question about age. Mm -hmm. And it's not that like funny anymore. But every single question is like, do you realize that you're the oldest skater? Or how does it feel, you know, to skate that you know, when that old, when you're that old and she takes it like gracefully, she laughs and, you know, she keeps answering with dignity because I would have been mad by this time because there's way more than the age in Diana Stilata still out of Dudek. But, you know, she's fantastic to speak to. She's always, you know, very, very nice and pleasant person. And it's great to have a laugh with her. I mean, she's fantastic. Seriously, she is fantastic. So she used to work at the doctor's office. She was the director of aesthetics, meaning she would help people get their Botox and fillers in their faces to look young. So she could tell you any figure skater or any celebrity and what work they have done on their faces. So she, <laughs> and she can help us all with our beauty maintenance. I mean, they really need to put her out in the media. They don't even know Actually, what they have. You know what? At the Grand Prix final in Beijing, she was asked about the perfect uh, skin routine for a day. And she, you know, she gave some good advice, like, you know, SPF, which I actually forgot today in Quebec City, and I, you know, got a little bit sunburned, uh, and some, you know, some serums and some night cream. Uh, she said that she's rarely asked about it, that, and she has, like, a very good expertise on the subject, right? So next time I'm going to ask her about some, you know, buttocks or something. But yeah. this time, of course, she was preoccupied with the worlds and with the gold and with, you know, winning that medal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what did you think of her performance? Were you happy with it? Um, I'm very happy with the short. Mm -hmm. And I felt that she's got some nerves at the free. But you know what? She got sick before the free. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, it was a struggle for her. Mm -hmm. But, you know, no, no one could tell, right? She needed that medal. Canada needed that medal. And actually, figure skating world needed that medal. 
So I think it's pretty fair. And, you know, she has pretty good technical content and she's, you know, she's doing everything to be on top and she is on top, right? So it's well-deserved. How do you feel about her three jump combination at the beginning of the program? She stressed me out with it all season. I really am not, you know, happy with where this combination is right now. The cascade, as you would. Is this how we say it in Russian? Is it cascade? Cascade? What? Yeah, combo is cascade. In cascade. Russian, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, she said a funny thing after, I think it was after the free. She said that she is that person who does, who makes lists. And before the season, she made a list what they have to improve, you know, technical content wise and, you know, component score wise. And she said, actually, everything is check, 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 check. And of course, she's going to have a new list for next season. And I bet there is something like more challenging technically for her and Maxime. So she definitely can surprise us. I was very nervous before her free because I, I remember her in Grand Prix China in Grand Prix final in Beijing. She was very hard on herself. She was like, nobody ever can judge me more than I judge myself. Uh, she's a perfectionist. She wants everything to be perfect. And she says that, you know, I'm here, I'm skating because I know why I'm doing this. And this is what I value like a lot because we see many skaters that skate just because they have nothing else to do. Honestly, they, it's the, th the only thing they know. It's the only thing they've learned. Uh, and it's really that passion for skating. And in Diana, we see passion, like big passion. I don't, I don't know. I think it's the most valuable thing. Did you notice on her throw in the short program, she, her her stomach, like her balance went a little bit of a check and then she went. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she gave us a look, you know, like she had an error and then she made it a star moment. I, I was okay with her in that, you know, her throws have stressed us out from time to time. It's an emotional journey with Diana. If you could imagine, she's but she's all of the, th she's all of Kosternaya, all of Sherbakova, all of Trusova together <laughs> in one, all of Medvedeva in one person, yes. But you know what, throw, um... It depends on two people. It depends on the team. It's not only girl who takes responsibility for a good landing, right? So I think it's a, it, it's a teamwork. So it's not like Diana stresses us out on her throw. It's the team that stresses us out, right? But Maya actually, Pajalusta. Throws... Maya Pajalusta. <laughs> no, Are you seriously. blaming Max? He seems like an angel boy. He... No, 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 no. It's not like being an angel or not being an angel. It's the fact that you have to throw your partner in a precise manner in a very correct way to let her land it of course girls you know they save lots of throws and sometimes they don't but very much depends on that you know how you push your, your partner into the air so no I also you know a partner a boy should also take the responsibility for a throw I think that this is a very nice boy. I think he's been good to Deanna. He's obviously been yes, very of course, patient. I'm not attacking him. No 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 it's just that That's it's for Max. That's yes of course. Now, do you, their coach is also very intense. You know, the coach had teams that competed against Gordieva and Grinkov. Uh, you know, she Jose Picard goes way, way back. She used to coach, you know, uh, Bruno Marcotte, Julie Marcotte, the choreographer. She and worked. now we see them by the boards, right? Yes. She's an intense woman, you know. she's. But probably Diana needs something, somebody that intense because she's intense herself, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's a perfect match. It's a perfect match. Now, how did you feel about the Japanese? They are very nice. I'm so bored of this free skate, Maya. If I hear the woman <laughs> music one more time, like I just- no, I, you know what? They had no other option then to bring back the skate, right? So uh, the season was not what they expected. They struggled a lot. Uh, so that was the only option they had, actually. I, let's pray that they come back next season. Actually, I don't care which what, with what program. I just want them to be there because it's such a pleasure to watch them. Uh, they have so you know lines and musicality and everything. I want them to be there, and also not you know it's very important to mention we need some rivalry. Yes. We need some competition, right? So I really hope that they are back and their health you know allows them to do that. I wanted to ask you actually if you thought Russia was coming back because I've had, we've talked about this offline, not in the last couple of weeks, but 
ever since everything that happened politically in Russia over the last couple of weeks, I really don't see it happening. But I saw Kauri Sakamoto in your interview said that she was working on Chitirnoy Loop, you know, a quadruple loop for her uh, free program so that she could compete to the Russian girls come back. I really don't know. It, it was not my interview. It was the interview to Japanese media because Kaori is always very open and talkative when there are Japanese med media around. When she sees some English speaking media, she's, you know, she speaks less. So okay. um, I very often have to ask the Japanese guys, the reporters, to tell me, oh, what, what has she just said? Um, she's very, you know, she realizes that she needs to add on, right, to in increase the you know, the technical content of her program, of course, about Russians are coming back or not, I don't know. And actually nobody knows. I don't, I cannot say that it's widely discussed, like at the world between the coaches, you know, the media. Uh, it definitely depends on, not on us, not on figure skaters. I don't see it's coming for, like in the nearest future, to be honest, because nothing changed, right? nothing changed and actually uh believer's verdict probably has made it even worse i don't know uh i wouldn't bet my money on that that's for sure and i'm not even sure they're going to discuss that at the congress in june in las vegas in las vegas i think it's they have lots of other things on their agenda probably they're going to discuss it like internally but i don't even think they're going to discuss this unban of russian skaters there I actually said I had, I think it's gotten worse since the verdict came out just because of- um, Why? Because of how close Camila Valieva is now as a political propaganda tool um, for the election uh, in Russia. Every post that she has, uh, you know, has a hashtag about supporting Vladimir Putin. And I think it's a little bit of a dark turn for figure skating as they're trying to uh, argue whether or not uh, figure skaters could be neutral, but the skater in question who started everything is now so close uh, with the president that I think it's it's hard to imagine them coming back when I see that. I know what you're talking about. I just think that Camilla probably does not have a choice. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not trying to protect her, but mm -hmm. it kind. Of, I have a feeling that they had some kind of agreement mm -hmm. that the state protects her and does not take her money away from her. Uh, and she has to, you know, pay back to the state. I, I see it like that. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that a 17 year old has very strong political beliefs, but you know, it doesn't help. That's for sure. It doesn't help. The because when, you see, so, yeah. the, when, when you see a person uh, with a verdict for, you know, with a doping case um, and she's being welcomed in the country, like widely welcomed and, you know, she's being presented at some not ice shows, but some, you know, forums or conferences as pride of the nation, that raises a, that raises questions, of course. Uh, if I were a media consultant, I would have done it differently, but they probably have their own agenda. I mean, everything depends on what they want to happen. Um, if Russia wants to come back to participate at the Olympics, we've discussed that a million times, uh, probably, you know, the tone Will, would change or they probably wouldn't take Camilla and you know place her in every political conference they can find but you know what recently I think it was last week or this week um I think Russians Russia's tone has changed a bit uh before that it was mainly like we don't need the neutrality it's a humiliation we don't want to participate and uh we're not going to support the athletes who would want to participate as neutral but today or probably yesterday we had uh some sayings that you know everybody knows that these athletes are actually from russia so why should we prevent this so we're gonna allow that if they want to participate that's a big turn i would say so something is like you know boiling up there cooking up there i don't know could you see Russian figure skaters going to other countries? And if so, could we please have Kostonaya compete in the pairs? <laughs> because pairs was Do you really want to take her to U.S. pairs? U.S. Have... Yes, yes, in a heartbeat. Jim Peterson could coach her. Yes, this could happen. Oh, I would love this. Yes. We have lots of very good teams, not only Mishnah Galyamov and Baikova Kozlovsky. But they're uh, so important. They need to compete at the Russian Championships. But Kasternaya, and maybe the one with the red hair that I love. Um, Osokina. Oh, oh she's, Osokina. So good. she's so good. But we have actually many. We have Kabibulin the Knizhuk. We have Chikmaryova, Yanchenko, all those, you Stop know, just ch ch their names. But they're good. But they're really good. Did you I see the American pairs? We have 
Yes. No. Uh, they are, uh, it's yeah. a challenge for them. Yes. But they, you know, I'm a nice Maya today. I mean, Maya, uh, you, have the- sat, you have sat at the Russian pair championships for how many years? And then you watched the American teams here. I wanted to know how you took it. Uh, I'm a very big fan of figure skating in general. I want the competition <laughs> to be there. If we say that, okay, it's only Russian teams that do well in pairs, how would that help uh, pair skating? I Where mean, do Chinese pairs go. Although, did you see um, that? I think board? they have some. I think I think they have some. You know, management problems because I was interviewing the Chinese team at one of the Grand Prix. I don't remember where. I think it was Finland. Um, oh, probably with yeah. the Trophy, the challenger. And they said that actually they had to train by themselves for four or five months last year without a coach, filming themselves and then looking at what they are doing on the ice. This is not normal. This is not good. Something is going on there. Probably they already, you know, changed it, but we don't see the result. And actually we don't see many other teams uh, I don't know, you know, China is you know, behind the Chinese wall for me, so I don't know. Did you see the Peng and Wang free skate that Lori Nichol choreographed? I mean, this is, this is like the Chanel of figure skating. I mean, this is real choreography, Maya. Did you? I love it? Lori Nicole's programs. Uh, yeah. She's a genius and she knows how to, you know, make a pair routine look so effortless. You actually do not pay attention to jumps, but at the same time, you have to do those jumps to make that happen, right? So you said it, they have to do it. Yes, there's no sugarcoating it. Now, what did you think about the German team? I would like more style and choreography. They're very uh-huh. steady, but they need it's time for movement and pictures and give them some time. Give them some time. It's their first season together. Uh, they're Biggest, you know, goal for the season was to make a statement. Mm -hmm. So they had to have those elements, you know, solid. And they had to get some medals as they thought. But look at their results, right? So they're champions of the Grand Prix final. They have bronze at Worlds. That's already more than they expected. They're going to work on that second score and components for next season a lot, they told me. They're going to change the style a little bit because so far all the lyrical, you know, programs that you see are a little bit Minerva style. Mm-hmm. Um, and they want to go for a little bit like sexier, some bluesy, probably something that shows us some chemistry between them. But they need time to get that chemistry. I mean, it's a very new team and they're doing the best. But I'm sure that they have very good future ahead of them because Nikita is extremely ambitious. But at the same time, he's so, you know what? I speak to them a lot, like to those teams. And sometimes you see that there is separately like a boy and a girl. Here Mm -hmm. we have Nikita taking very good care of Minerva. And I've seen her a lot with the previous partner. And, you know, previously she was never that happy. She's Mm -hmm. really happy to skate. Even if she fails, she's like, okay, I'll figure something out and I'll be better next time. She is way better mentally. And I think she finally found the, you know, the enjoyment of skating. And Nikita supports her a lot. He's very supportive and he's always there. And, you know, it's a pleasure, like real pleasure to watch them off the ice because they are a team. And, you know, they have to learn a lot. They will. Now, you really value education. We have talked a lot about what university my queen, Anna Sherbakova, should attend. (laughs) You already picked one, right? <laughs> yes, yes, we picked the, yes the best, obviously, Anya. But um, Nikita Volodin, he needs to pass the German language exam, and this is not. Yes, he knows that. He knows that. He's well aware. Uh, he said that he could not, you know, study German this season because, exa- again, this season was very, very, you know, hard for them. But he's going to start doing this, and. He has no other way. He needs to pass that exam. It's not that complicated, actually. And Nikita speaks, you know, he starts speaking English and he's better and better every day. I'm sure he will do that because the motivation is, you know, going to the Olympics. Of course, he will do that. And Minerva will stop speaking English to him and start speaking German to him to help that happen. So, you know, it's just a question of time and they still have it. It's not like it's only a year left for the Olympics. They still have that year. And Nikita, you know, you know his story, it's actually not a very typical story for a Russian skater. He left Russia to skate with Minerva uh, with zero guarantees. He had no money. He had 
no future actually and nobody could guarantee that the fact that he leaves Russia and leaves everything behind will result in anything so he participated in a couple of ice shows earned some money um, and used that money for his training I know it sounds very logical for a western you know yeah. audience but it's so not typical for a Russian skater because usually it's like can you guarantee us that we will have money, housing, you know, salary? We want to be completely covered. Mm -hmm. And he did that. He, it's like a leap of faith. And he did that. And I respect him so much for that because nobody guaranteed him that it will be a success. He just trusted Mitri Savin, the coach that found Minerva for him. He, and he trusted his new future. And look where he is. Can you tutor him in languages? Because you're obviously very skilled at learning them. And I don't, <laughs> you're German. a Russian mom. You are a whatsoever. Russian mom. I don't want you telling him he has two years to learn this. Maya, stay at, like, come on, Dubai, what are you doing? Like, he needs to be studying right now. Duolingo, you know, Babel. They what? have very, very good atmosphere uh, in the team of Dmitry Sabin. Uh, not a very Russian atmosphere, I would say. They are very respectful. They have a um, great team. You saw that it's Fyodor Klimov who used to skate with Ksenia Stalbova. Remember her? Yeah. You remember him? And there is a girl who was wearing sunglasses at the Kiss and Cry. Have you seen her? It was Sofia Yevdokimova. She's a choreographer in the group. She's an ice dancer. And actually, they have great relations within the team. Very healthy, very respectful, very not typical, again, I would say. So hopefully it will be better for the, you know, for all the teams that are trained with them. Oh, Sorry, uh, you know, I've been problem. talking so much that I'm a little bit losing it, so I'm sorry. Okay. There's someone in the Kiss and Cry I wanted to ask you about. Yeah. Who is the German team leader? Who is, or the German Federation? She is a woman, she has such a unique style. She's in the Kiss and Cry with all of the German skaters and she looks like a character. Who is she? You know what, that's my that's my task for next season. I'll definitely give you some profile information. I'm so far, I'm not ready to develop on that. I was so busy with the skaters. Uh, I didn't pay much attention to the team leaders, but I will definitely find it out for you. You, you She's, come on, she's sitting in the kiss and cry with the Terry. Yeah, I, I know, the, the German? No, 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 the, the Georgian. Oh, the Georgian, okay, sorry. I thought you were talking That's, about the, Ge oh, sorry, the German. Sorry, the Georgian, yeah. Uh, it is, yeah, she is, uh, I think she's mother of Georgian figure skating. Mm -hmm. uh, she is so passionate. I adore her, seriously. She is, uh, her name is uh, Maka, for short. For short. Um, you know what? She is such a big patriot of Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, she cries when, he's, when she sees flag, you know, being mm -hmm. there at the podium. Um, she does a lot for Georgian figure skating. Without her, there would be no Georgian team. That's for sure. That's I'm, I'm absolutely sure. She's doing everything. She's like choosing their uh, uniform. She's uh, paying for some extra class classes. She is always there on the phone who is sick and who needs some extra attention. Uh, definitely mother of Georgian figure skating. That's for sure. Mm. No, in the men's event, the Georgian. Oh, that was my favorite. I usually love ice dance. But of mm -hmm. course, this world's men's event was just, you know, a blockbuster. I need to know if you saw one thing in real time when it happened. Which? Did you see a Terry when her students skated into the boards? I just, no. I just. No, I didn't. We <laughs> have I seen her. With that. Why does she treat men and women so differently? If Maya Chromik didn't land all of her jumps, we've seen a Terry not go to the kiss and cry. You know, we have seen her just be Polina Surskaya. How many people? She is very tough on the Russian girls. This boy, she was coddling. She was acting like it was okay. Laughing with him. Maya, what was happening? Uh, you don't want to give her you know, a second chance, do you? <laughs> I just, um, you know people, you know? Is... You know what? She didn't have an option of not staying in the kiss and cry with him. Usually there are way more coaches mm -hmm. from her team, right? Uh, here it was only her. She has really good relations with Nika. Um, I'm not sure Nika or Terry were too happy about the free skate. We know that they weren't. But um, 
Come on, Maya. Anna Sherbakova yeah. won the Olympic gold medal and she asked her where the third quad was, right? This boy skates into the boards and she tells him it is okay. This Maybe is this is the reason why Anna Sherbakova is an Olympic champion and Nika is not. No, I'm joking. But um, <laughs> it's just that they've been trying so hard with Nika because he's a, he does well at all the practices. I saw the videos. He, is, he lands everything. There are some problems on the component side, of course, and you know some programs that I don't like much. But what he needs at first is to skate the technical content that he has. Um, it's been, you know, a struggle for him. Short was already good, and free was still. Maybe Terry doesn't understand what's happening there. I don't know. She, I don't know. I cannot jump into her head, so I don't. Maybe know. Morris will come back. He will bring competition. No. No, no, he will not come back. No, 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 no. He's so happy, finally. He's released. And, you know, he does lots of shows. There will be big ice show tour of Terry to Bridge in spring. And Morris is there. Um, he loves doing shows. He loves those gala numbers, as you remember. Oh, I remember. And he, I... And he doesn't like stress of the competition. So I'm sure he's very, very happy now. And nothing will pull him back. No. I think Terry could do it. I think we need to bring him back for the Georgian team medal. We need more competition. Oh, no, probably they will have some new men soon. We don't know. Yeah, maybe uh, Moselev, maybe, or, you know, who knows? I'm watching that curiously. Yeah, I don't know. There is still time before the Olympics, right? That, that last year for a ban, not for a ban, for a quarantine that, you know, they have to set to change the flag. I don't know. We'll see. I'm absolutely sure that we'll have many news this off season in terms of you know changing coach teams and changing flags oh i'm watching the georgian teams changing flags because i'm noticing that um this team is they're getting very close to team medal territory you know they could earn a team medal at the olympics for georgia they're definitely very ambitious and they have the good thing about their team is that they have pretty you know good average level it's not like in korea where they have Good girls, good boys, a fantastic ice dance team with a great potential, and they have no pairs, right? So, and the same with the France, with France and everything. So um, they have good chances at least to qualify to the free skate to the second stage of the team event. And this is their goal. Yeah, they actually could medal there, that's for sure. They're not hoping to just qualify for the free, Maya. We go for the medal. We fight That's, for the medals. You say. know, but there are too many contestants. There are Maya, too many what kind of a Russian that... are you? You fight for the medals, okay? You are there to fight. This is like... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a wrong Russian, right? You are uh, like a Canadian Russian. I, like, I, don't, <laughs> I don't like this. I don't understand what has uh, happened no, to you. It's, it's that, you know, let's count the teams that can do well at the team event. If Russia is allowed back as neutral, there will be no team anyway, because there can be no neutral team. If you're neutral and you do not represent any country, there cannot be any team. So what we have, US, mm -hmm. we have Japan, mm -hmm. we have Canada, Canada, I don't know. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Yeah. We have yeah. Italy mm -hmm. and we have uh, Georgia for sure. We might have Korea if they sort out, you know, thing with their pair. Who, whom have I missed? Israel is usually in the team event. Uh, Israel? Sometimes. Uh, listen. No, are we talking about like real teams that Maybe, can um, In the past? I think that Italy has a shot. Italy, for sure. Uh, um, and they actually, I would place, I would bet on them. Yeah. Uh, if Charlene and Marco stay... For the olympics and this hasn't been decided yet i spoke to them they say that actually of course you know it's home olympics of course everybody expects them to stay but they say that they don't try they try not to think about their pressure and they have to take so many things into account uh, they decided that they don't want to stay just to hang around they want to stay if they can really meddle at the event, which makes sense, right? Because they have to sacrifice so much, they need some kind of reward. So if if they stay, the Italian team has pretty good chances. They have boys, they have, the weakest probably is the girl, but they can, you know, do something to them. So I think that Italy 
as the strongest chances for bronze or even not bronze. I don't know. Remember, the, not every discipline has to do well because you like to bring up Karen Chen that she of didn't course. have the best performance. So, yeah. Yeah, you keep <laughs> reminding me of that. Uh, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, speaking of coming back, Gabriela Papadakis seems to be the wild card and whether the French ice dancers, Papadakis and Cicerone, come back. What is your take on this situation? I just read an interview with her. Now I'm really not so sure. It's like Gabby Watch. I think we all look at her social media channels and we say, yeah. is Gabby coming back today? Is she not? I know for sure that we will know very soon mm -hmm. because they have to make a statement either, you know, either way. Mm -hmm. um, I was very hoping for that to happen. And there were some signals or probably some talks about that. But after that interview and after the fact, you know, Gabby was not present at the Bell Center. She didn't step in the at mm -hmm. the arena in the arena. Uh, she was at the practice rink. She was seen at some restaurant nearby. But I don't know. I don't see much interest in her mm -hmm. uh, for that. But I I really love mm -hmm. them to come back. First, because I love the team. Mm -hmm. And I would love to see them skate. They definitely haven't said their last word. But second, I want that intrigue back yes. into the ice dance field. And the quality um, of the field. The quality wasn't there for the top teams for me. And I was so disappointed because for the last... Are we talking quality of skating or quality yeah. of program? Both. Uh, programs were good. Actually, I don't ish, think... Excuse, Izvini. It, it was not Moulin Rouge against Moonlight Sonata level. I, I, loved, I, no, I loved the Canadian free skate. Uh, Withering Heights is, I told you, we spoke like in autumn, or, I don't yeah. know, early December. I really love it because mm -hmm. that's a story. That's a story they perform. It's not a very easy music. Mm -hmm. um, and they take, I mean, the whole audience was mesmerized. I spoke to couple of judges and they said it was just a mesmerizing effect. Um, I really loved that dance. I really loved that dance. And of course, the free of Chuck and Bates is also very, very interesting. I wouldn't say that actually programs were not, the quality of programs were not good enough. It was, they were good, but they would be nice for a bronze medal, right? I thought they were like nice bronze medal efforts, but I want the legendary Torvalin Dean performance in Iceland. But you do I, remember I that it's just in the middle of the Olympic cycle. Doesn't matter. Middle Nobody, of the Olympic no, no, season, no, no, no. Papadakis and Cizeron, they did to build a home at Boston Worlds. I was there. It was life-changing. Okay. This was a very nice performance. Yes, but there is only one Papadakis and Cizeron. That's it's why they need to like come back. You know, there are many. Is... I'm afraid that the fact, like, everybody says they need to come back is we a want them to come back. Gabriella We're dying to come back. We will give Maya's five-year-old daughter to you to come back. I mean, I just this is <laughs> we need this sport is like. Oh, I am the I'm the biggest fan. I want them to come back. That's for sure. And seeing Guillaume and kiss and cry and by the boards was not enough for me. Of course, there are rumors that he's about to choreograph a number of you know routines, even probably Ilias. Ilya Malin, yes. Yeah. yeah um, but I want I want to see him on the ice. They, he choreographed fantastic gala number for Chuck and Bates, mm -hmm. but I still see Guillaume in that choreography when they skate, and it's a beautiful program. I still see Guillaume in that a lot. Did you get to see your favorite ice dancer, Madison Hubble, and her new baby? Oh yes, oh yes. That was I think it was one of the highlights of the world of the championship for me. Does she know that you're in love with her? Does she know? Yes, we she, all she does. We have a very funny story going on. Um, uh, a friend of mine who is also, I think, number one Medicine Hubble fan in the world, um, humbly asked for an autograph last fall. And of course, and I said, of course I can do that. And uh, we spoke at one of the Grand Prix, I think in France, and I lost the paper. So I've been hunting to get that autograph again. Uh, and so many skaters helped me, Christina Carrera, and, Lohans for uh helped me. me as well. Like everybody helped was helping me, Scott Moyer, to get that autograph by Madison Hubble. And finally we met at the practice ring here at Worlds and she signed that piece of paper for that girl. So I think it's like a, it's a movie story. Uh she's great. The baby girl, Chloe, she's adorable, adorable. She's fantastic. They're very 
uh, her and Adriana, new parents, and you know, you cannot take eyes of them, eyes off of them. Uh, you know, I look at them and I want to have another baby. Seriously, I have already <laughs> three. That's enough. Uh, so, um, she's there, but she's also, you know, I remember myself when my babies were at the age of what three weeks. Um, I could not concentrate at all. And Madison, you know, she's there. She's uh, helping her teams, and you know, I'm so happy to see her. Okay, not on the ice, which for me is a big loss for figure skating because nobody skates like Madison Hubble, but at least there. And actually, I see, not like I can judge, but I see greatest potential in her as a coach. I think she will be a star of that Ontario campus. And they have fantastic teamwork with Adrian, who is very professional in terms of you know technical things. And Scott being there, I think they can grow into a very good team. We just need more skaters of quality there i think but christina you know she made such a journey she is have you seen that program at the beginning of the season and at the yes. end of the season it's a, it's two different programs we need to work on anthony christina is really improving i would like anthony to improve a little bit more maya and christina can continue to improve uh, um, so you want to kill my chances of speaking to them again right so <laughs> No, uh, listen, uh, I no, am I'm all, joking. if Madison Hubble would like to make a comeback, I would be all for it. After, I doubt that. Come on, I she could be really, inspired really by Deanna Scalato, and she could say, I am a mother, and I'm going to, Katerina Gordieva came back after she had Dasha, right? And I think <laughs> Madison Hubble is the same kind of character. I think she could do it. I think we have, there is a question with Zachary there, but, yeah, you know, we, we had an in, I had an interview with Madison, um, in fall and she said a very interesting thing she said that they always dreamed with zach uh to skate one last year when actually no medals mattered for them doing all the crazy stuff you know doing the lifts that would get penalties but being very interested in incredible lifts doing something that would not bring them lots of points but make an outstanding program and I think that would be so cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really, really wanted that to, you know, to see that because with the quality of Madison skate, like the way she's skating, her skating skills, she could do so much if she would not be, if she was not, you know, limited by the regulations, by the rules, we could have seen incredible performances. Now, Zach, if yeah. you wanted to come back, and skate with Olivia. He technically could go to the Olympics with her. Now he's very patriotic, but I haven't heard about that perspective. Tell me about it. I'm just thinking she needs a strong guy, right? Olivia? Yes. You She's don't a... believe in that team, do you? Not at all. I do. I don't. You you know what? It's ice dance. You remember we were talking about pairs and we mentioned that they need time. It's pairs, for Christ's sake. But for ice dance, you need like five times more time. But it's Olivia... only their first season, but everybody's judging them. Like, oh, they're not Tessa and Scott. Okay, nobody's Tessa and Scott, right? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they need time to gel. They need time to develop some chemistry in this ice dance field. I mean, give them some time. I think that everybody is so hard on them. And we're risking of losing Olivia. Please don't. <laughs> I don't see the mix of characters between the two of them on or off the ice. He or is still the... very stressed on the ice. We do not see real Tim there. Yeah. I have strong belief in Mary France and her team. Oh, they can develop a character there. At the moment, he's very stressed, very scared. He doesn't want to, um, you know, I don't know. I just think that he is also a perfectionist and he doesn't want to let anybody down. She and doesn't look as good as she did before. Like, mm -hmm. she's not performing at her maximum. It almost looks like because, because she, she needs to adjust as well. It's a new partner. Everything is new. Hi. She needs to give uh, more. Technical. He can he give is, more. Yeah. Um, he, you know, these are two different skating schools. Yes. Because him is, you know, mainly from that Russian, yeah. you know, and Olivia has been skating her whole life in Montreal team. No, I mean, recently, right? A lot of years. Um, they need some time. Let's give them this time. Because this is why I when think they it work. Okay. 
Zach? Yeah, I do think that, I do think that could work because uh, they Olivia with team with Tim, I think team Olivia with Tim team. is team is very. I think she's faster. I think they're like there's more power mm -hmm. on the ice. They just need to tame it. They need some, you know, they need some time to learn to see how everything works together. So let's just wait, okay? Listen, we don't have a lot of time. I, I'm nervous for her. I believe in her. And I just think she used to date Zach, so they know each other. He used to date Madison Hubble. This is not a problem, you know, in Ice Dance. This is not, you know, so This new. is the criterion you actually bet. No, I'm huh? just talking around the issues because people are like, how dare you accuse him of skating with, her? you know, suggest them. They used to date. He used to date Madison Hubble. This was not a problem, right? <laughs> they know each other. They both have those Patrice Lausanne edges, right? And they know, we. Can, it's not like they're strangers, right? This is... No, I think that if, I don't know, uh, it's Olivia's choice. It's her life. It's Tim's life. Her but life. Would, she I wants to be in last happy. place at the in the ice dance, in the free dance. She can continue with this partnership. I am seeing more possibilities for her. And then Marie France could get another girl for Tim. And then she could have a German boy, oh, a German judge and a Spanish judge, which they would love at the International Academy of Montreal. I'm seeing more possibilities for them. I think we need another year and they need another year. And you know what? I'm very grateful that they continued. They decided to continue. They could have retired. Um, and every time I saw their blondie routine on the ice this season, I was very happy. It made me really happy. You're human. Um, yes. Yeah. This is because it was very 80s. Mm -hmm. What I missed this season is this 80s vibe in the 80s programs. Yeah. We had lots of good dances, lots of good programs but very few had the this, this 80s vibe and Olivia definitely had did have it let's talk about Marjorie and Zach okay the, the, my podium. new favorite yeah they my deserve new favorite. to be on the podium right this was incredible yes but you know there's a cue to the podium yes <laughs> so, um their short their rhythm dance mm -hmm. was just the best I mm -hmm. think it was number one and they skated it so perfectly everything was there speed edges uh you know it was very side by side and uh i hope they get good programs next season i trust in roman in that a lot because he loves them and they're definitely they definitely have to be the leaders for the next olympic cycle i just hope that madre's health allows that to happen um, I saw the Instagram post, post that she had today with all the recap of her concussion history. I mean, I almost cried because I can imagine what she has gone through. Uh, they are fantastic. When you see them, they are even more crazy and the crazier than you see on the TV because it's fantastic quality of skating, which I love, you know, quality of skating and this power on the ice. Oh, that's good. They, I think they don't have any weak spots i think everything is there it's a very complete team so you know of course i'm for them yeah i thought they had the best free dance performance of everyone for what they can do they did their maximum is what i thought they did their maximum but i still think that the best free performance of the night was the weathering heights i'm very tarasova with the judge here huh? tatiana tarasova complimented them usually if they ask her about the world champion <laughs> He will say, I didn't watch. It wasn't no, to be honest, okay, let me protect, let me protect Tatiana Tarasova. Um, <laughs> she's always very complex. She's, you know, she's saying good stuff about foreign skaters because yeah. she's been in this world for so many years. Her weak, her weak spot is she's absolutely sure that everybody's against Russia. That's her point. But she always says that we need to watch worlds. We need to keep an eye on what's happening. Uh, it's not like figure skating is dead without us. Please watch it. If you want to return, you have to realize what's happening there. The same as Tamara Moskvina. So uh, she's always saying good stuff, actually, about- She know, says a lot of bad stuff, skating. too. She also about, said not about to know me skating? after we had a conversation. You know, this was also funny, but yes. No, but she, when, she rarely criticizes, like, when it comes to skating and just come to comes to programs, she very rarely criticizes foreign skaters. She does say a lot of bad things about Americans for someone who visits our country quite frequently. Uh, 
has made a lot of money here. Yeah. I think this is very much lost in translation. So imagine how it happens. Um, I'm having an interview with Phil Hirsch. Uh, he's saying some stuff. Yeah. It's being translated into Russian. And then somebody's calling Tarasova, retelling what was said there. And very often, it's not even close to what actually was said in that article or that quote. And then she answers not to the original, but mm. to what was told to her. Mm. Then it's being translated into English. And it's like zero of truth there. Um, she has her, you know, she's not very well. She's mm. kind of thick. Uh, and sometimes she's very to the point. Mm. Sometimes she's not and very, in, you know, insult she says insulting stuff. Mm. But I still believe that it's because she's not being told what mm. actually happened. Mm. And of course, she's like, oh, what did they say? Did they? Oh, that's so bad. But actually, they didn't. Mm. It's the same thing that happened with uh, words of Luna Hendricks. It's mm. been translated into Russian in a very weird way. And now everybody is like hating Luna because oh, did she say that bad stuff about Russian figure skaters? How could she? But they didn't read the original. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens, I'm afraid. Now let's talk about you and Phil Hirsch. He was trying to steal you from me in front of my face a couple of weeks ago. You did a big article on Phil. Uh, yeah, I interviewed him because it's very important for me to give some spotlight to what it's what is, you know, the understanding of the whole situation in America. Uh, we had a lovely dinner here in Montreal. He invited me out, and we talked like to dinner hours. with Phil. Yeah, oh. yeah, we had dinner and we, we had fantastic talk and, you know, very interesting. He is a legendary person. He knows so much. He remembers so much. And it was just, you know, I was sitting like this. Oh, really? Oh, really? Can you tell me more? We discussed lots of politics. Uh, it was a very interesting dinner for me. You guys were talking about books and classical music and all right in front of my face. It was, it was, it was. <laughs> no, actually, we talked a lot about politics because I love politics and Phil loves politics. Yes. And we are not very positive about what's happening in our countries. So we had lots in common. Yes, yes. I wish I were there. But uh, he also loves cycling and everything yes so let's discuss uh, you know lots happening you and you need to have a blog so that americans can read your work because you profile all of us and what viewers may not know is that when you profiled me i was in the front of sports the front article of all of sports rules the summer of 2022 and they took a picture of me with a Terry and they turned it like bright red. Like it looked like we were coming from hell, right? And it was on the front. I have nothing to do with that. I have nothing to do uh, with that. I might've seen it. I didn't see it. It got a lot of clicks. Yes, it was. I don't know. I have nothing to do with that. But it was, but the, see, it was the most I fair. My mission, okay, it wait, was the most fair article on me that anyone has ever written is what I was gonna say. I was complimenting you, Maya. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Uh, I yeah. couldn't see that compliment coming. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have a mission. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm here to earn money with doing figure skating journalism, which you understand it's you know stupid to expect. Uh, it's not that I want some you know publicity. I do have a mission. I want to keep telling Russian audience that there is still figure skating, mm -hmm. that there is you know it hasn't stopped. Look that there are these skaters, these coaches, these uh, media mm -hmm. person, these reporters, these journalists, these bloggers. Uh, and at the same time, to tell the international audience that actually there is figure skating in Russia as well. It hasn't died. It's still there. It's developing. And those two worlds, they kind of need to coexist. And actually, sooner or later, they will exist as one world again. So I want to, you know, I see my, myself not probably as a bridge, but I want to give spotlight to both Russian figure skaters and, you know, in the West and international figure skating in Russia. Uh, probably it's not much and I don't, I cannot change things, but I definitely would love to. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's let's discuss, because I think we could use you at presidential debates with Biden and Trump. I mean, you have <laughs> skills that we, <laughs> uh, Madison Chalk, now you know Maya, 
you were rooting for Wuthering Heights. I told you that I liked the Chalk and Bates free dance. We've talked about mm -hmm. this off camera. So? I was not happy with their performance. Two years in a row, I have not it been- It was not the performance dance. of their lives, that's for sure. And they definitely know that. And they lost the, that free dance to the Canadians, right? Um, what I love about Chalk and Bates is that they keep developing and they keep going. Every year it's something new. And it's a very interesting free dance. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very. But I think something was missing there yes, on Saturday. Probably they wanted that medal too much. Mm -hmm. uh, probably they thought that the medal is already there. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but it was not like the skate of their lives, like Piper and Paul did. Yeah. Um, An audience, it always, you know, feels that. Although, you know, the audience at Bell, at the Bell Center was incredible. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they were that loud, you can hardly see, hear music. So it was very welcoming and all skaters noticed that and said that actually it's like audience been carrying them mm -hmm. through the program. Um, I'm looking forward to what they create next season. Um, I think that their rhythm dance this year was a brilliant program, a very complete, but it was not 80s. Mm -hmm. It was just a great Freddie Mercury queen mm -hmm. routine with a fantastic dress, incredible dress. And I was disappointed because they could do 80s. She could do it. She's a diva, as you have said, yes. Uh, yes, yeah, she is definitely a diva. I mm -hmm. don't, I would love to see her in 80s because definitely she has that acting potential that we kind of rarely see now because she's very much diva because she's a true star. She's a Hollywood quality star, that's for sure. But, you know, I would love some, some acting, yeah. uh, some vibe, some some image. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I'm sure that if they decide to stay, uh, they will come up with something which can be, you know, a good, a very good program that could be legendary, right? Yeah, I also want to see more speed and more attack. I think their biggest work is psychologically for next season. Uh, psychologically? Yeah, because um, they were defending this year and it's very hard to defend, right? Your title, you've the stress. Now I think they need to move forward and think about their legacy, right? They need don't to you think don't you think that actually when you're twice world champions, it's getting even harder? Because I... if you lose that title the pre-Olympic year, it's like a suicide. So I'm well, not that... sure they, they can experiment. And this I... is what makes me really sad. I think if they don't skate up, they'll be in big trouble because they have had two questionable world title wins without strong free dances, right? They fell last year. Mm -hmm. This year, there were a lot of mistakes, and I think they need to skate excellently next year. But the more you think about that, you need to skate excellently. The more nervous you became, you become, Remember right? Bertrand and Moyer had the stumble in 2017 at Worlds. Yeah. The next year, that did not happen again. Uh, this is I about know, being I have a mixed, champion, I have mixed Maya. Feelings. Let's say I have mixed feelings. I love all three teams, Italians, Canadians, and Americans. But at the same time, I have a feeling that as they're still there mm -hmm. and no new younger couples can approach the podium, mm -hmm. um, which actually, I mean, it's natural. Nobody should give their place to anybody. Um, but I want the new chapter probably to start. To Not happen. that I'm, you know, saying farewell because I'm dying to see Italians. I'm dying to see more Piper and Paul because they could, you know, they could do more dances. And I want to see Madison and Evan, as you said, working for their legacy. But then I need two podiums. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I think something has to happen in the, in the metal rostrum. I think there needs to be movement. It's just, it's a little bit um, stagnant. We see the same people at press conferences. This is yeah, for sure. I Every time we see the same three teams, uh, they joke already, you know, there's actually not much we can ask because we know pretty much everything. Now, how about Lila Fear? She wants to be on the podium. And oh, Swiss they're words. very ambitious. They're extremely yeah. ambitious. Uh, we'll see what they can, you know, their 50s, 60s and 70s is definitely their theme mm -hmm. for the rhythm dance. They can do so well. Uh, I'm a little bit scared of what we're going to see in the Olympic season because the 
music of 21st century, I'm not ready for that much of Taylor Swift on the ice. But, you know, probably somebody can surprise us. But you like Taylor me, Swift in Russia? Like, is Tatiana Tarasova, does she know who Taylor Swift is? Taylor Swift in Russia is not what Taylor Swift is in America, of course. Yeah. But of course, they do know her. I mean, she's is not Billie young. Eilish still popular. I, I miss Billie Eilish with like Kosternaya, Medvedeva, Tukdemisheva, all of our girls. But Billie Eilish was popular with those Hrustalni girls when she was popular everywhere else in the world, yes. right? So, I learned um, about Billie Eilish from Hustoni. I have to tell you, this is really how... yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true. They, you know, they all shared their playlists and yeah. they got Billie Eilish's songs from each other. Uh, and there was some kind of fight. Who's going to escape to Billie Eilish? Uh, but a lot of fights over Billie Eilish, Kosternaya and Glykenhaus. <laughs> yes, a lot of fights over Billie Eilish. Yes. Uh, can you tell me what was your favorite? skate of men's tournament on Saturday, free skate. Yuma Kagiyama. Maya, it was like watching art. And then he did his second triple axel and he was skating on the edge. He's doing the gorgeous Lori Nickel program. You know, this is like real thing. Landing, whoa, this is he's like, landing. Like Frank Carroll is at home happy, you know, in his heart, <laughs> right? Like Frank in his turtleneck, having his martini, watching Yuma probably not knowing what his name is and being like, and to Ann Jensen, his, his is a good boy. And then he, he felt, and I like my voice went octaves higher when he fell on the triple X. It was killing a moment for me. This was. Uh, he was killing himself after that. But yeah. for me, the skate of the day was Adam. Okay. What he did was just, you know, when you have nothing to lose, you skate, the way you would never skate if you were attempting mm -hmm. to get on that podium. Um, I truly love what he developed into as a skater. I love the way he skated. I love that backflip at the end of the free. Just the mere fact that he is still decided to do that shows his attitude and his passion about figure skating. I love that so much. Maya, I'm worried we have religious differences. <laughs> what about the smooth edges of Yuma's landing of like Chitirnoi Tolu? Chitirnoi you know what I like? You know what I like about Yuma the most? What? Carolina Costa by the boys. Of course, of course. <laughs> but you know, she was my favorite. And at the end of her free program at the 2013 Worlds, she was gonna win, but Lori Nickel choreographed this triple sal cow to bomb to finish. And she went triple sal cow to her butt at the end of the program. And I screamed at that time. I'm not over it. It was, it was How upset. How do you remember all that? I have to rewatch all that to oh, remember. Oh, please. You part. remember so much, please. You, in your seven languages, you're asking me how I know something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I should hire you as my PR. You should. What did you think of Shoma? Why was he so happy? in the kiss and cry when he finished, but then in his interview, he wasn't. He was so, was he just relieved with the stress? Actually, he was very, I would say relieved in, yeah. in the zone. He, he seemed was serene, not, calm, was, right? Like Yuma was unhappy mm -hmm. and Sean was not. It felt like there was a burden on his shoulders and it felt, it's like he was finally relieved to go off season. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if we're gonna see him again, I really hope we will, uh, because there's only one of a kind. He's one of a kind skater. I don't know whose landings I like more, his or Yuma's, mm -hmm. but I think that he needs to stay in the sport to make it, you know, spicy for Ilya. Mm -hmm. um, I'm afraid that he might be tired, and he tired. might be, you know, the Japanese Federation is not supporting him enough. I think mm -hmm. so he might decide to go, which I hope would not happen. Did you see the love of my life, Marin Honda? Was yes. She there? yes, yes, she was there for Fuji TV. She was interviewing all the skaters, except for Shoma. Uh, when Shoma went to Fuji TV booth, he was always her colleague. She never did that. She's a good girl. And she was interviewing Ilya right after his victory. Okay. So he stepped on the ice, he got his medal, the victory ceremony. And then before going to the press conference, you know, so for our viewers who do not know what happens after they walk off the ice, first they do 
a thousand pictures on the ice with the medal, with the coach, with other teammates. Uh, then they go off the ice and they do five or six lives for TV. Mm-hmm. CB, CBS, CBC, how you call that? CBC. Yeah. CBC. Yeah. NBC, Fuji TV, uh, ISU video. And they keep saying the same stuff. So they keep going from bun- one booth to another and keep saying, I have no words. So <laughs> then after that, they go to the press conference and they have to say that again. So for Fuji TV, it was Marion Honda and Ilya. And I have a picture of that. Um, and I think it's also legendary. Um, she's so beautiful. Oh, she is, she's, she's just, you know, she's stunning. She's there and she is, you cannot take your eyes out of her. That's for sure. She was my favorite. Thomas, Thoma is so lucky. And he's he knows so, that. Yeah. Now, tell me, you said you met Tara and Johnny? I, no, I actually haven't met them. I saw them, you know, doing... You were excited. The, you said they were very loud Americans, yes, in a good way. They yeah. were very, you know, uh, Johnny was... The first day he was wearing something very bright green. You could easily spot him. Um, I, You know what? I regret that I didn't have time to actually go and, you know, meet them. Uh, because I was just running very busy and, and I couldn't go there. But I've spoken to Kathleen Hawaiik, who was mm-hmm. a DJ at the arena, and she did such a great job. And, you know, it was very funny because the media seats were right by her DJ booth. And we kept seeing figure skaters coming to say hi to her. So it was like a place where you you would find all the figure skaters because they came to say hi to Caitlin. She was a true star. She was, you know, she was so good. She was always on that big screen uh, at the Bell Center, I think. I asked her and she said that I actually haven't watched that much figure skating in my whole life because he was she was there for the whole event watching all of the disciplines and she would and she also said that she never she's never seen that much of herself on the big screen at the arena but she was so good she is you know a very good dj she was she just did a, a seminar in Lake Placid, but I wasn't there. Now, did you see their free dance that they posted on their programs for this year? They yeah, had- I cried. I yeah. cried. Both, both of them I cried. You two one, I was just already crying with or without you, but it came second. And the first one, I literally cried because Jordan from a nice perspectives who filmed that. Uh he left this, remember he left this time after everything was after they were done with the skate. And they were speaking and hugging and smiling and crying. It was overwhelming. I cried. I think that was the best free dance of the season. We did that was the one time we saw it. It was so good, the choreography. Yeah. It was so good. And their one foot. Oh my God. We need that one foot to be back. Mm-hmm. Now, okay. We were talking about Shoma. I didn't like his programs this year. I loved his programs last year. They to me, I didn't like either one this year. Uh but what do you think of Ilya? So I like the short program better than the free. The free, obviously, the jumping was, I don't think we'll ever see someone jump like that again in our lives. What did you, what was it like there? Um, I think it was, again, a blockbuster. And mm-hmm. I th- I'm i so happy that he finally got the t- title. Mm-hmm. What I like about Ilya is that he still is very thrilled mm-hmm. by the world of figure skating. Mm-hmm. He loves that. He loves to experiment. He wants to do some new jumps, new elements. He's very, he's like a teenager being very interested in some new field. He's not tired of figure skating. He's not fed up. He's not like, oh, again, figure skating. And one can see that, right? Um, For me, I don't know what I miss in his skating. I think I would love to see a little bit of more, like a story. But on the other hand, he's still 19 and we ask too much of him. Mm-hmm. He lands six quads, including quad axel. I don't think he has energy left for doing something between those jumps, although it's getting better, of course. And you see that. Um, I'm I'm dying to see if Guillaume could choreograph that new program for Ilya. And I'm dying to see what Ilya can take of it. And, you know, because uh, Shailene Bourne, choreographed a routine for Ilya. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it looked when she was doing that. So I wonder what Guillaume does, if it's true, of course, if if Guillaume is doing that. But 
I think that Ilya, there's a road to perfection and he definitely will surprise us. He is very, he's a very happy teenager in those, you know, interviews and after he's done, he's like, oh, I got it. It's not like, oh, finally I have this world title. It's like he doesn't understand completely what that means still. Of course, his coaches, his agent and everybody around him do understand what that means. Uh, but it feels like he's just got a new toy. Oh, that's yeah. funny. I'm a world champion. And it's great. Actually, it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, Did I you think, like it? I think we will see it. Uh, I want to ask about Jun Wa Cha because he had such a brilliant free program. Again, Shaylin born, but it wasn't, you know, skated. He's been injured. Did you get to talk to him at all with... Uh, uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. Um, unfortunately, I missed him in mix zone because I was doing something else and I was watching something mm -hmm. else. Um, what I heard is that he last summer off season he spent in Korea doing lots of TVs, commercials, advertisement. You know, doing so much stuff not related directly to the ice. Uh, probably that showed up. That showed, but it's like you know, last season he was on fire it's like he wanted to skate and this season i don't see that mm -hmm. yeah i didn't see it with jason either this year he seemed tired to me this year all year a but little bit don't you think it's something incredible that jason just you know jumps into the world championship and gets his fifth place yes it's like keeps happening and he's very stable what i think is that american federation needs him more than actually he needs you know mm -hmm. worlds uh, he is adored by the public mm -hmm. and I think that to sell tickets to the nationals and to sell tickets to skate America um, everybody needs Jason mm -hmm. and Jason is also one of a kind and he, there's such a story behind him um, he says he is about he's, he's going to stay, he's not going anywhere he's staying and I think he's staying until the Olympics he is going to be choreographing new programs, he will be doing way less shows after this world's uh, there is some U.S. show in April. I think it was in Washington, or in, I might be mistaken. I think it was in Washington. Uh, he he's going to do that show, and then he's going to concentrate for a couple of months until July, probably until those Japanese shows um, on new programs on skating. Because what he said is that the post Olympic year, he still used that wave, the Olympic wave that carried him for the whole season. And this season it kind of ended and he had to find new, you know, new everything. That's why he couldn't do the new programs for this season. Uh, he realizes he has to change the attitude and next season he will be way more involved. But, you know, do you really want him to retire? I don't. No, no. I don't want him to retire. I just said he seemed tired. He was running all around. So I'm, this is good news. Yes. Um, yep. It's going to be a little bit different next season. So we're going to see some new programs. No, I was happy for Isabel. You know, she did it. But I have to ask you, this Russian coach, Maya, she has the short program yeah. of her life, okay? And uh, Yulia Kuznetsova, she gets off the ice and she just tells her to calm down, which I thought was hysterical because if you ever see Galina Zmievskaya, the skater could have the performance of their lives, whether it's practice, anything, they get off the ice at the Olympic Games, they've just won gold, and she goes, Nichigo, Nichigo, Nichigo. You know, this is uh, real Russian. You know what? I'm absolutely sure that Julia, Julia, mm -hmm. knows so much better how to handle everything around Isabeau. Mm -hmm. Isabeau is a, like a teenager. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think it's very easy to coach her. Well, she's and a character. Yeah, she has, she's a character. She's a champion. Yeah, she has a character. I mean, but she's a personality, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that Yulia knows, you know, how to balance her. And it was just a short program. If Isabel, you know, went to the clouds, she might have lost the free. So I don't know. I think it's only the coach and the figure skater who know what's better for them. I'm so happy I'm not the coach because this is the responsibility I would never be able to take because it's like, you cannot do anything. You stand by the boards. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you're kind of responsible for what's happening there, for how to, you know, protect your figure skater for the, you know, day between the short and the free. Oh, it's it's not the job I would want. Mm -hmm. I mean, her free, I mean, I was so thrilled that she did this. 
Um, it's interesting that her spins have not been quite as good this year as in years past. I was shocked because I think, I she, think she grew. I think yeah. she grew and that affected the spins. Yeah. So I'm worried, but I'm hopeful for next season. I hope they let her be a little bit younger in her packaging you know the it, the coach it it doesn't look like a young girl is skating and I, and I hope we get to see more of her because she has a personality that there are so few skaters that have that kind of star quality the madison chalk right isabeau has something it's why the public likes her and i want her to work with someone other than yulia to bring it out and let us get to know her more you know, to grow her up, to develop. Yeah, probably yeah. we need to see her like development. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that they came up with a new short program just in the middle of the season shows that actually that there is this safe path they can mm -hmm. always stick to. This lyrical, you know, music, long lines, Isabel. And she actually was very open about that. She's like, we had to change the program because we needed something safer. Mm -hmm. uh, something that was not overwhelming, something that I could skate to easily. And for me, it was pretty easy. I don't know if she wants to try something else because even, you know, usually you look at the gala numbers mm -hmm. to see what skate is actually like. Mm -hmm. And Isabeau had, very, had a very Nancy Kerrigan program, I would say, even the dress. Um, I don't know actually what she truly likes herself. She always says that she's a big fan of Nicki Minaj, but I cannot see that on the ice. But um, I really hope that she she manages to survive this, you know, complicated period that all Russian figure skaters have faced, right? Um, her jumps very much depend on her physical shape. So I think she has lots of things to worry about that's why it's difficult for her to try and experiment with some new programs. She needed that silver medal to secure his spot, to make her feel confident. With all those, you know, stories of Alisa Liu coming back, that could actually, I understand why US Federation is doing that. But at the same time, I, I'm scared a little bit that it will affect Amber and Isabel, not the way they want that, you know, to affect them. Because Confidence is what both of them lack. Mm. And if Alyssa comes back strong, that would not bring confidence to neither Amber nor Isabel. Maya, you told me the other day that I am more Russian than you are. And I think that this is true. You're worried for the girls about competition. Rustalny had six girls going for the Olympics. And it took six to make the Olympic champion, right? We need more competition in America. We need Ava Ziegler, Amber, this one, that one. You're no, 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 don't, don't get me wrong. I do, I do believe, strongly believe the competition is good for the sport. Yeah. It's very good. But at the same time, I am, you know what? There's this thing, when you speak to those skaters in person a lot, you feel for them so much. Yes. It's not easy for them. It's um, It doesn't come at a small price for them. And of course, everybody is fighting their own demons and everybody is, you know, unhappy and ruined after a bad skate. Um, you want to go and hug them. Yes. At the same time, I completely, I'm completely with you. The bigger competition is, the better is for the sport. And I'm happy that Alice decided to come back. Uh, I'm very excited to see what she can show. Uh, the ones, the jumps that she showed on Instagram were pretty decent. Uh, the problem is whether she can skate them into the program. Uh, but you know what? What I saw at this world is that the U.S. Federation has started preparing for the team event in Milano. Um, they're like very, very on onto that. And we're going to see lots of happening, I think, in this field. And they need that medal. And I'm talking gold medal because they have very good chances of getting gold in Milano and they want to get one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they haven't gotten their last gold medal yet. Um, now, I want to- I'm afraid that they will get the one in Milano faster than, the, <laughs> yes. than that one. Amber, Maya, what are we going to do? What? She's such a talent. We're going to give her so much credit for doing that triple axel. We need it in both. Um, I just hope that, it, I just hope that one day it will stop ruining her program. But I admire her so much. 
the same as Lisa Tuktamashiva doing triple axel, not being 14. Um, we miss those big jumps mm -hmm. on the ice. And the fact that Amber brings them back is so worth watching and so worth giving her that credit. Um, I'm happy that he has a title now, that she has a title now, and it's easier for her. Uh, but I would love to see that, you know, probably, I don't know, I'm not her coach, but probably that triple axel could come to, could be in the short program. Mm -hmm. So she has enough time to finish the short program without falling apart as it happens at the second part of the free. But of course, I understand that it's the risk, but you know, I'm happy she's there. I'm happy she's continuing, and I'm very much into for longevity, 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 yeah. of, mm -hmm. longevity in sport for the girls, for the ladies. Um, I was not a very big fan of her short this season, no. short program, um, but we'll see. We'll see what she comes up with. That was a very important season for her, and I'm happy that again. I'm happy that I, she has a title now. I think she's national champion, and she needs better choreographers to bring her personality out as well. I don't. I. I don't think she's working with people up to her level. I think it's experts time. It's you know the Chanel yes, time. Probably, yeah. but you know how it happens with the skaters. It's sometimes coaches are not. There are some coaches who say okay, go and try that choreographer. Go and try that choreographer. I want you to experience and explore options. And there are some coaches who say, who, you know, who would feel that it's some kind of betrayal if you try some other choreographers. So for skaters, it's very often very complicated to go to your coach and say, you know what? I want to try choreographing my programs with this choreographer. So I don't know. I'm, I really think that Ember needs a packaging and probably an, a new good program would do that. I think that if we, that it indicates that their coach has insecurity and that it, the great Carlo Fossi knew to send his skaters out and they would come back to him because he was the best in his opinion. Yeah, of course, of course. But you know, uh, I don't know what kind of coach I would be. Um, you know, you're very scared that you're, skater would leave, will leave you and sometimes if you if you have only one skater of that scale um it's kind of really scary for you so i don't know i would like to be a strategic coach and tough yes uh <laughs> but encouraging but tough yes uh intense uh what do you think of Kauri? I didn't like her programs this year. She skated very brilliantly. I miss her life from last year. Last year she had such energy. Um but you cannot be, you cannot show that energy every season. Again, we're in the middle of the Olympic cycle. You're you just have giving probably... everybody a vacation, everybody a holiday for no, my. No, but, no, but seriously, sometimes you have to step back a little bit to attack the Olympic season. You cannot be the best of yourself every season. It's not Kaori's fault that actually there's not much competition to her, that probably. Um, she needs to regroup. It, it's been a complicated season for her. I like her free. I like the way she nails it. Um, she always needs a new motivation. That's why she starts speaking that she's doing, she's practicing, she's trying to attempt the quad loop. But you know, when you see Corey on the ice, not on the TV, but on the ice, it's so much power. It's mm -hmm. so much you know, how do you call that? Amplitude? Amplitude. Yeah. Height, distance, yeah. speed. Height. And it's like, it doesn't matter that it's just a double axle. It's the best double axle ever existed. Mm -hmm. So um, I would love some competition. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, she deserves to be a three time world champion. That's for sure. No, Luna Hendricks didn't have the free skate she wanted. I really think she. But you know what? There's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. Um, she's been um, she's been sick for a long time. Her problems with her hip and her back, mm -hmm. and she said that actually she didn't have a single complete run through of the free program since the Europeans before mm -hmm. the Worlds. So uh, she said that she was so happy to get the small gold medal for the show program, and she never expected to win anything in the free, because she was not ready she was not prepared 
And she actually realized that if everybody else skates clean, she has no chances. She was pretty open about that. What I love about Luna is that she's very, she's not hiding behind the words like, I want to be a better version of myself or um, I'm skating against only myself. She's only very honest. And she's saying that, you know what? Look at me. I'm not crying. I just missed my medal at the Worlds and I'm not crying because I knew that I was not in, in the position, in the shape to get one. Mm -hmm. And I like, about, I like that about her. It's not like she's like, oh, I just missed the chance of my life. She knows that there will be more chances and she had chances before. Mm, she was not devastated, that's for sure. Yeah. What was your moment of the world championships? Ah, the moment of the world championships. I don't know, the comeback of Adam saw him find the free. Okay. Because I was screaming, I was calling my friends in Russia, it was like two in the morning. Because it's just, you couldn't believe that. When you yeah. saw that on the ice with your own eyes, and Adam is the one I'm cheering for a lot. That was probably the moment of the of the championship for me. My French boy is Kevin. Then back to so, I'm back team to Kevin you. forever. Mm -hmm. I'm on the emotional journey with Kevin. You know, we just I can't I get off. I want Kevin to come back strong. Yeah, we need those two very strong French men on the team, uh, and they're so different. What I love about French team is that their two men are so different. Uh, we used to have like sometimes our Russian girls at the championships were very much alike. And those two boys on the national team are so different. It's such a great pleasure to watch them. But Adam, what I like about Adam is that he's developing so much. Look at Adam, let's say five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, and look at him now. Um, this is the skate I'm going to be rewatching a number of times. That's for sure. Well, I'm loyal to Deanna Stilato. I thought it was the moment of the world championships. Obviously, Ilya is going viral. Um, I prefer more. Ilya is speed. legendary. Yes, it's of course. I'm not doubting it's, it's it. Legendary. Yes. Yeah, it's it's something out of this world. It's something like he's an alien. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, when you're 19th in the short and you're just skating that way and you get the bronze medal, I think it's a movie story. All right. You and Adam, listen, I'm loyal to Kevin. I'm loyal to Deanna. That's what I'm saying. But it was obviously an incredible comeback for Adam. I'm not denying that. So yes. Yeah. Maya, thank you so much. As always, our favorite guest. We get so many requests for you. You know, you need an American, you know, Twitter, Instagram. The people need to follow you. Should you I start Twitter? Twitter? Should I start Twitter account? Yes. <laughs> you and Elon Musk. Why not? <laughs> It's not Twitter anymore. It's X account. It's not, yes, so. I'm sorry. Okay, it's X. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, not, it's not X, X, X. What? I said thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit slow because it's been a really tough week for me and there's so much work I have to do after this world with all those interviews. So thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, like we don't, don't talk in real life. Of course, we do a lot, but <laughs> it's always fun to talk right now. So um, yes, I would like a long yeah. interview. I want you to interview Shoma, uh, Deanna Stellato, um, a Madison Hubble interview, you know. And maybe, I, I'm about to, I'm about I'm I'm about to publish one from the one I took in fall. Mm -hmm. Um, she's she's great. She is you know she is really really great. And maybe you could have I'm a YouTube channel. You could have yeah. like a show like Genia Medvedeva, how she has her talk show. I think we could have <laughs> figure skating with Maya. <laughs> no, I'm already part of your show. I'm very loyal to you. You're loyal to oh. Kevin. I'm loyal to you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Have a great night and bye, bye. everyone. Okay.